Hi guys, welcome back to another Napa STEM Academy art lesson. Today we're going to be doing a windsock activity. Today's lesson is going to have a little bit of science in it. Not only are we going to make our very own windsock, but we are also going to learn a little bit about meteorology, weather forecasting, and the usefulness of windsocks. Let's have some fun. Windsocks are used to tell wind speed and wind direction. Windsocks typically are used at airports to indicate the direction and strength of the wind for pilots and at chemical plants where there is a risk of gaseous leakage. They are sometimes located along highways at windy locations as well. The earliest use of windsocks has been attributed to the Japanese. Centuries ago, they strung carp-shaped flags known as koinobori on a tall bamboo pole to celebrate what was then called Boys' Day. This celebration yearly took place on the fifth day of the Chinese calendar's fifth moon. Before we get started with our activity today, let's learn a couple words that are associated with wind socks. The first word is meteorology, which is the branch of science concerned with the processes and actions of the atmosphere, especially as a means of forecasting the weather. Meteorology has a lot to do with the guy you see on the news every day telling you what the weather's going to be like. That comes from the science of meteorology. Wind direction is reported by the direction from which it originates. For example, a northerly wind blows from north to south. Wind speed or wind flow speed is a fundamental atmospheric quantity caused by air moving from high to low pressure, usually due to changes in temperature. Now we're ready to begin our project. What you're going to need is construction paper, colored tissue paper, colored markers or crayons, scissors, tape or a stapler, glue stick, and a string or yarn. Your first step is to decorate one side of a piece of construction paper or plain white paper. You can make a fantastic design of stripes or spots, or you could draw animals and spaceships if you like. You can use your imagination in whatever way it takes you, but make sure you completely color and decorate the entire page. Step two. Take the completed artwork and roll it lengthwise so you are creating a tube shape with the sides overlapping about an inch. Have your artwork on the outside. After that, tape or staple the overlapping ends so as to create a fully connected solid tube. Step four. Create streamers by cutting your tissue paper into one to two inch wide strips that are about 15 to 20 inches in length. You will need between five to 10 of these strips. It would also be really nice if you have different colors of tissue paper to use. Step five, tape or use glue sticks to attach the ends of the tissue to the inner edge of the bottom of your tube. Step six, use the hole punch to put two holes in the sides of the top of your tube. You can also use a knife or other instrument to make the hole, but if you're using something sharp, make sure to have a parent with you. The holes should be about half an inch from the top and they should also be across from each other. Step seven, run 10 to 12 inches of string or yarn through the holes. One end of string through one hole, outside to in, and the other end of string through the other hole, outside to in. Tie the two ends of string in a knot. Now hold the string from the looped end and you can now run around the room showing off your windsock. Step eight. You can attach the windsock with additional string to a nice place on your porch or your favorite tree to see how the wind affects it. What are other ways we can experience wind speed and direction in our everyday lives? There are many ways we can tell wind speed and direction by using our senses. 
we can see with our eyes when the wind is blowing through the trees. And if you look closely, you can tell which direction the wind is blowing. We can sometimes hear the howling of the wind when it is really strong. And we can also feel the wind as it blows against our skin. And if we pay close attention to how it feels when it touches us, we can tell which direction it is coming from. If you have a kinder through second grader, really encourage patience when they are decorating their paper. It's okay to be abstract and random and silly too. Let their imaginations roam. And remember, everyone is an artist. For third grade and up, if they really want to get advanced, they can craft their windsock out of fabric and use fabric tape to do the artwork and assembly. You could use many different household items to craft the top ring. It really could be a lot of fun. If you want to take your understanding of wind to the next level, you can try this activity. The direction and speed of wind plus clouds and other clues help meteorologists predict the weather. You can understand what is learned while watching your wind socks blow in the wind. What direction is the wind coming from? Can you tell the difference in the speed of the wind just by looking at the wind sock? For 10 days, record the speed and direction of the wind and the weather at the time. Graph it. What did you learn? We hope you had fun today making an art project and fusing art and science together. We'll see you next week with another art lesson. 